we are going to start things off with a little bit of cleanup. My plan this time was to take us um, from a click on one of the list items into a new detail page. But I got to looking at the page I have here, and there's a few things I think would be nice to clean up so that we have a, I guess, production-worthy list page with a search. If you notice my uh, type here or my filter uh, field disappears as I scroll. And that just doesn't feel right. I think you always need to be able to see what's in that field. So we are going to um, not only change the search field um, such that it doesn't scroll away, but we're also going to put in an official search bar with a clear search text icon over here. What I'm going to start with is the uh, search or the scroll capability. Let me get this out of the way here. I want to be on the page layout. And the goal here is I want to make it so that our scroll view scrolls, but the page doesn't. And therefore, the input field will stay in place like it's anchored. And that is as simple as on the page layout, disable scroll and stretch to the viewport height. And if I save that and I come back to our mobile emulator, I can still see the type here field, which is wonderful. But in doing that, you introduce a new problem, which is now the scroll area doesn't realize that it's not showing. If you look at the very bottom, I have to pull up and it snaps down and it shows maybe two thirds of that last item. And that's because I do have this now anchored at the top. So there's an easy fix for that. Um, still on the page layout, uh, it defaults the page layout to be a theme value of uh, eight pixels, which is padding page vertical. We're just going to pick a custom value for that. So I put it to custom value so I can change this. We're going to go with 40. And we are going to switch back over. And now if I scroll, I can see the whole bottom item. So with those two, well, two check boxes and a bottom padding, I've got something that looks more realistic to a normal app. There's one last piece, because I went uh, kind of lazy when we initially did this and just did an input field here. I'd like to change this to a search bar. There's the search bar. So what I do is, I, what I need to do is recreate some of the functionality from the input field to the search bar. If nothing else, I guess it's a good refresher. So the first thing I'm going to do is associate the page variable that is storing the text. So we go to data and variables, page variable, and pick it. This is just like what we have on the input field, and now it's associated to the search bar. Um, then the next thing that we're going to want to do is add a new event. So when we receive an event, drag this out here, and I pick the event source. So anytime the page variable filter text changes, there's going to be an event that's fired. And that is associated with uh, where we're at right here on the search bar. And so all I'm going to do is I'm going to rebuild. I'm going to click here on input. I'm going to rebuild this debounce, get record, set data variable. And I'm going to rebuild that for here off of the text changing. So if you remember, we had to install the debounce so it lives on the installed tab. And just to be exactly the same, we had it to 200 milliseconds. I'm going to switch back over to core. And I am going to get the record collection. So this, once again, doing the same thing. Defaults to the to-do because it's all we have. I get the data variable through the filter and its filtered text. So now that should get a filtered list. And then, of course, I have to remember to set the data variable so that the list, which is set to the data variable, will display. So this defaults correctly for us. Then I need to change to output from a prior node, the record collection filtered or not that was retrieved, and the full collection of records. And at this point, if I've done everything correctly, we should be able to switch back over 
and type in the search bar and get a filter. And we did. So we've got that set up correctly. Um, what we're going to do now, since we know that's working, we're going to delete the old way. And now we have a real search bar. But I'm going to go one step further because when I did this in another one of my apps, I wanted the ability to have an icon over here that allowed me to tap it once and clear out all the text I had in the search bar instead of having to back space um, a whole bunch of times if I've got a lot of text in there. So these uh, components we're using are actually, I'll call them composite components. And so when I double clicked on it, we went into what's called isolation mode and it's focused just on the search bar. And now I can see over on the right, I'm in the search bar and there is a search icon and a search input field. And you know, you can click on them up here as well. And so what I'm gonna do is very simply just make room next to the input field. So I'm gonna go dimension and position of the input field. We're gonna set it to about 80%. So I've shortened it and I've got some space here now. And then I'm gonna find the icon and I'm gonna add the icon to the page, which goes right to the end as it should. And then we wanna to go to the properties for that icon because we don't want a star because that doesn't really speak to clearing a field. How about a, an X and a circle? That tends to be my favorite. And then let's go to the style and we wanna change that icon's text color. And so we're gonna go down into the color. The theme capabilities are really nice and strong in AppGyver. Uh, I don't know when or if I'll be able to get into those details, but just know, let me look up here. You have a whole theme page in main navigation where you can change and add to all of these variables. I'm just gonna pick an existing one and that will make us subdued or gray. So now I have visually an icon representing it, but now what I need to do is I actually need to set up an event that will get fired when this is clicked. And to do that, I go into Edit Properties. I'm going to come down here and add an event. And then name the event. And we're going to say uh, Search Field Clear. But we'll spell that correctly. OK. So now, what I need to do is when the icon component is tapped, I want to trigger an event. So down here, we haven't used this yet, but this means that anytime that icon is tapped, this event that I'm now going to pick out of the triggered event list, we're going to pick component search field clear. And if you remember, that's the exact name we just created in the edit properties, which is what made it available as an event. So the edit properties exposes that event outside of this component to the rest of the mobile app. And the tapping of it tells me specifically which one is gonna be sent. So if I've done this correctly, I can now exit isolation mode and then come back out here. And what I'm going to do is receive an event and if I did this right, we will see search field clear. So that means it's being exposed from that component. And now I've got, whenever that's clicked, I now very simply want to set a page variable. And guess what variable that's gonna be? <clears throat> that is going to be our filter text, which is our only one. So once again, it defaults correctly. And I'm going to set it to an empty variable, which is already there. OK, so here's the big moment. That was a whole bunch of steps just to get a little icon. But it becomes really functional because I can reuse that all I want uh, within this application. And I believe you can also sh share this out to your own marketplace and reuse it across apps. I haven't done that yet. Don't know how that works, but I'm excited to try it at some point. So here we go. Let's type in wash even though it's already found it, we're gonna put in all of it. And if I did this right, I can tap. And there it is. I tapped once and it got rid of the keyboard. I tapped the second time and it went away completely because the focus was there. So we'll just put in a whole bunch of text. 
and I tap it and it goes away. So to me, that's kind of nice and easy, um, a nice way to clean up this page before we move on for real in the next term. And next time for real, like I promised, we'll do a tap on one of these list events and we'll open up a detail page. Thanks again for watching.